Hello everyone, Marissa Mullen here from Cheese by Numbers and That Cheese Plate, and I am so excited to be reporting live from Brooklyn, New York at my apartment. Haven't been live on here in a while, so hello, nice to see you again. And as you can tell, I have my nice festive house plant with Christmas lights on it, because you know, we're feeling like we're in the festive spirit right now. And today I'm so excited to be here with Harry and David to make the most amazing festive cheese plate with a ton of different cheeses and accoutrements. I got this amazing gift box in the mail. And in addition to this, I got some meats and cheeses as well. So what we're gonna do today is go through the cheese by numbers method step by step and show you how I'd like to make this cheese plate for the holidays. And if you're new here, cheese by numbers is a method where you can create a cheese plate in six easy steps. So I uh, created this method um, pretty much because I make cheese plates all the time and I realized I built them in the same order every time. So that order is step one is cheese, step two is meat, step three is produce, step four is crunch, step five is dips, and step six is garnish. So we'll go through those steps and once we bring it all together, we'll have a beautiful cheese board. So are you ready to get started? I have two angles because we're, we're fancy now over here. I have my, uh, my cheese office now, which is really fun. All right, so I'm gonna flip y'all around to the setup. Look at that clip this into place. Beautiful. All right, so we're starting with step one, which is our cheese. Move my chair out of the way. And we have three beautiful cheeses on this plate. So when you wanna make a cheese plate, you want some sort of variety here. So I have three different types of cow's milk cheese, but they all have a very distinct flavor to them. So the first cheese down here is called Rumiano, and this is a dry jack. So this is like an aged Monterey Jack cheese. And what I did here is I cut out the rind. So we kept the rind on the cheese to kind of keep it in this nice little shape. And then I cut the pieces inside so that it's, it's easy to pick up for easy grazing. So you always want to pre-cut your hard cheese while leaving your soft cheese whole. That's kind of like my go-to tip. Next up top here, we have this decadent cheese for the holidays. This is Bellavitano Tennessee Whiskey. So this is a whiskey flavored, creamy cow's milk cheese. It's so good. It gives you that nice like whiskey smoke to it, really pairs well with a nice charcuterie, so like some salami, beautiful. And then last but not least, we have Leonza, which is a um, Alpine style cheese. This is similar to like a Gruyere style, and I cut this into little rectangular wedges here. And with the Belvitano, I cut it into another little rectangle. So you just wanna cut it into these pieces that are easy for people to pick up, um, obviously in COVID with toothpicks, don't use your hands. When I serve a cheese plate, I always like to put a bunch of utensils on the side as well as little mini plates. People can make their own cheese plates as well. So that's what we're gonna do with this plate. So step one is complete. We also want to make sure we have a solid foundation. So I have this nice Lazy Susan that spins, very fun. And I added in my jars and ramekins to fill in any sort of thing that requires um, like a dip or a jam or anything in a brine. So we have a lot of those on this plate today. So I have my foundation all set. So step two in the cheese by numbers method is our meat. So if you're a follower of that cheese plate or cheese by numbers, you may be familiar with the salami river. And today we have two beautiful salamis. So these are two of my favorite brands, Cremonelli and Oli. This is a truffle salami, which is so good, especially for the holidays, like super decadent. This would pair really well with the Tennessee whiskey um, cheese just because they're both equally as uh, decadent in taste. And then I have this Casalingo Italian salamis. So this is more of a mild type of salami. So with these two, two uh, meats, since they aren't pre-cut, what we're gonna do is cut them into little coins here just like that. So I did it already to save you the time. And what we're gonna do, so on the salami river, if we had like a Genoa salami, you would fold it in half and fold it in half again to make a little salami flour. But since this is pre-cut, it's much easier. And we're just going to start at the top of the board and layer it down to the bottom. So I'll take my salami here. And if you're new to cheese plating, I'd say that this is an easy way to start with your salami river. You know, just use hard salami because sometimes with the folded salami, it might come apart easier and it's a little frustrating on your first try. So I'd say cheese board starters definitely start with one of these types of salamis. And again, like this hard salami goes really great with a lot of uh, sharp aged cheeses. So this will be, it's gonna be our, like our ultimate decadent plate. 
So as you can tell, I curved it into a S curve, which is a salami river shape because it's a river of meat. And what I'm gonna do is do another salami river with the truffle salami directly next to it. So this one is going to be intercepted by our little jar, which is totally fine because we're gonna kind of like break up the flow a little bit. So then we'll just continue down on the other side of the river. Sailing down the river, beautiful, perfect. And then another meat that we have on this board today is going to be, let me add in one more, one more little piece here, beautiful. We have this amazing sereno shoulder. So this is similar to kind of like a prosciutto and what we're gonna do with this is take it out of the package, rip off the slices one by one and instead of making this into a river, we're going to make it into a pond. Get it? So just a little pile on the plate. And I like to do the ponds um, with my produce as well, which we'll get to. But for this, this is what it looks like out of the package. I'm basically just going to take it and like gently fold it just to make this little nice ripple with, with the fat. <laughs> and we're going to place it on either side of the plate. So I like to work a lot with symmetry on my plates. So if I put some of this on the left side of the plate, I'm going to put some on the right as well. So I'm sort of just wrapping it around my little jar. And again, you wanna kind of rip the pieces so that they're in bite-sized pieces, which is easy for serving. The worst is when you're at a party and there's just like a large piece of like a cheese or meat that's just difficult to get into. So you always wanna prep it for your guests. So I'm just going to wrap this around on this side. We have our nice symmetry going. Beautiful. So step one and two is complete. We have our meat, we have our cheese. Now it's time for step three, which is our produce. So I have a few different produce items on this plate. When you add your produce in, you wanna think about pairings and you wanna think about color. So I have this lovely orange color for my apricots. I love dried apricots because they add a nice sweetness, but not too overpowering. And the tart is a really nice flavor too to tie in with some sharper cheeses like the ones we have. So I'm just going to make a little produce pond on the bottom side. And again, work with my symmetry. So since it's on the bottom, we're gonna put some on the top. Beautiful. I also have some signature Harry and David pears here. And with these pears, we're just going to kind of fan them out. So to keep these from browning, I'd suggest putting some lemon juice on them. Mine have been sitting for about 15 minutes. So they're a little bit brown right now, but definitely just put a little lemon juice on and that will solve your problem. And I'm fanning them out and putting them just on the plate again in little areas here. Perfect. So we have our fruity items on the plate. Produce covers everything from fruits to veggies to uh, anything in a brine. So like olives, beautiful. And these olives are amazing. These are pitted green uh, grilled olives. So what I'm going to do is put these, since they're in this juice here, put them in this little ramekin. I love using Castle Vetrano olives. Those are kind of my favorite. I have this nice little olive fork, this like little mini fork to help get these olives out of here. And you can see there's like nice grill marks on here. They're so good. They're a little bit uh, fruity as well as salty and briny and kind of have a little smoky flavor too. And I'm putting that next to the whiskey cheese because we have that smoked whiskey here and then the smoked grilled olives. It's just such a good combo. Perfect. So we finished steps one through three. You are almost a cheese plate pro, we're halfway there. Now time for step four, which is our crunchy items. So crunch covers everything from nuts to crackers to bread. Um, on this plate, I have these beautiful crackers from Rustic Bakery and these are cranberry and pistachio. And I'm going to do like a little cracker stack and put them on the board like so. Obviously you look at this and you say, oh, okay, like four crackers is definitely not enough to serve this entire cheese plate. But what I like to do is put a cracker plate on the side of my cheese plate and easily refill that as you go. So put some on the plate to get people started, fill the rest on a little cracker plate on the side. I also have these really cute mini toasts that also came in my box from Harry and David. And I'm going to kind of just scatter these around the plate as well. 
So at this point here, we're just kind of filling in the rest of the gaps on the plate. So I have some here and then I'll put some here as well. So this item we'd probably classify as produce, but since it has rice in it, it's a stuffed grape leaf, I'm going to put it in the crunch section. You could put it in either section that you want, but I just kept this for the crunch because it does have the rice. These are stuffed grape leaves. These are so good paired with like an aged salami, um, super decadent for your holiday plate, also has this nice green color. And we're just going to stack these on the plate as well in the open spaces. So I'm gonna put some over here. And then again with symmetry, let's put some up here. So as you can tell, there are still some gaps left on the plate. And what I'm going to do with the rest of these little gaps is fill them all in with some almonds. So this is where we sprinkle in, fill in your gaps so that no plate is showing. Looks super full and abundant, so pretty. And just sprinkle them in. So you can use any type of nut. I like to use um, Marcona almonds a lot of the times. So those are really good. Uh, raw almonds are great too, mixed nuts. You can do candied walnuts or candied pecans for the holidays. But um, Harry and David sent these amazing almonds to fill in our little gap. Beautiful, it's coming together. So now we have to fill in all of our lone ramekins. And so it's time for our dip section of cheese by numbers, which is step five. So I have a wide variety of dips on this plate, which I'm really excited about because usually I just use like honey or mustard and never like go overboard with the dips, but I'm ready because we have some amazing, amazing dips here. So first up, we have our artichoke lemon pesto. And I'm going to use a spoon and scoop this in. This would be really great on one of the mini toasts, also paired with the cheese. Love that. Beautiful. Next up, we have this really fun dip, which is red pepper cheese spread, which is another fun little spread that we're gonna add in here. Look at that orange color. This is like, we're really painting with our, with our items right now to add in some color on this plate. And also so much flavor here. Perfect. And then in the center, let's do some of this Harry and David hot honey mustard, because if we're working with our whiskey cheese, we're working with our sharp jack, nice uh, salami, truffle. We wanna balance out that intensity with something that can stand up to the flavor. So we have this spicy mustard here that we're gonna put in the center. Beautiful. And now we want something sweet on the plate because we have our apricots and our pears, but nothing to really balance it out on here. So what I'm going to do is add some Divina fig spread and just put this in to this little ramekin here. And you can use your finger too if you need to. <laughs> awesome. So now we are on to our last step, which is our garnish. So I like to garnish with a variety of different things, mainly fresh herbs. So you can use sage, rosemary, thyme. Um, you could do eucalyptus. In the summertime, I like to do edible flowers. Those work really great. And so what I'm going to do is just kind of place these within the cheese plate so that we have that final pop of color. Cause I feel like we need some more green on this plate, especially if it's festive for the holidays. So what you wanna do is tuck in the end of your uh, rosemary so that it almost looks like it's growing out of the cheese plate. So I'm just going to tuck it in under the crackers here. And then working with our symmetry, I'm gonna do it on the other side as well. So take this and just wrap it around and you can just put it underneath the crackers like that. Beautiful. I moved my river over a little bit. Let's move it back. This is where my cheese plate OCD comes into play. <laughs> You know what, I'm gonna break this. There you go. Make it a little smaller. Perfect. <laughs> awesome. So we made it through the cheese by numbers method, which is steps one through six. Look, I can rotate it because this is a fun, lazy Susan. And if you wanna talk about some wine pairings on this plate, I have a really good wine that would pair with this. So this is a Harry and David Pinot Noir. 
And Pinot Noir is a great pairing with these types of cheeses because it's not too overpowering. So you always think wine and cheese goes really well together, not all the time. So you don't wanna do a too heavy of a red wine with cheese because it might overpower the flavor. So a nice light Pinot Noir is fruity. Uh, it's fruit forward to tie into these fruit flavors, but then it kind of balances out those stronger flavors of the cheese and the meat. Beautiful. I'm gonna go back to my face. Hi. Do I have lipstick on my teeth? I think I do. That's embarrassing. <laughs> this is what happens with our, our virtual workshops, you know? It's like anything goes. I could have lipstick on my teeth, whatever. I'm human. But here we go. Cheese by numbers. Beautiful. We love it. Thank you, Harry and David, for these amazing goodies. I'm going to enjoy them on my Friday. And stay tuned because I will be posting the step-by-step -step behind this cheese plate on Cheese by Numbers with suggested pairings, items to choose. Uh, in the meantime, go check out Harry and David's website because they have a ton of different gifts for the holidays. And yeah, thanks for tuning in. I'll see you guys very soon.